Spec Ops mode is our answer to co-op, where you and a friend can hop on, you, know, you can actually play it solo, you can play it split screen, you can hop online and play it with a friend. A Spec Ops, the story is you begin the level and you finish the level. It has nothing to do with the single player campaign, so it lets us create completely separate challenges and we can really explore all kinds of different gameplay. In Spec Ops mode, when your buddy goes down, you can, you can go over and heal them if you both, if you both are hit. The, the level ends and you have to restart. You can actually separately set your difficulties. Like I, if I'm inexperienced, I can pick regular and my buddy's hardcore, he can pick uh, veteran. The difficulty would definitely affect AI the most. So as I'm going through, I'm expecting the AI to do something familiar, like pop their head up twice. You know, we see that a lot in the old days. You know, that those days are gone. The AI will pop its head up. You want to take that shot, but He's not doing what you want him to, he's acting like a, an adversary. It really adds to an experience that just is never the same every time you play it. What we saw today was a breach and clear where you and a friend like breach through a wall and go and clear out this shower room and go through and you're, you're getting attacked from all sides. You can expect to see a snowmobile race. We had you know, the, the, the snowmobile that you saw in the cliffhanger demo that we showed. Just go run them. Go, go. My favorite mission would be a state for Spec Ops that we're showing right now, and it shows off our ghillie suit stuff that we did last game. We've stepped into the next game with uh, reworking the ghillie and throwing in an enemy ghillie. So you're really having to go through the level and, and be really careful about spotting them in the bushes. <laughs> The real level, the, the favela, the ghetto, kind of really tight gameplay in Spec Ops. I believe people get like a kick out of it because it introduces civilians into the level. So you have to work on your muzzle discipline. You're not allowed to kill a bunch of civilians in there. You're really focused on taking down the militia. You can go through it any way you want. It's this winding, uh, kind of shanty town type of a level. Early on in the project, we were playing around with the idea of a character who was like a bomb diffuser guy, but not diffusing bombs, just super armored and like a truck, a freight train that would charge you. Instead of taking cover, he would just run at you like a crazy man. You'll hear this cue that tells you that juggernauts entered the level, and they don't always enter from the same point, so you never know where they're coming out. So you really have to think tactically, because you do not want this guy on your face. He will destroy you. Our design team is really creative, and I feel like Spec Ops just takes the handcuffs off. They don't have to abide by single-player rules and stick, which is great, but it just lets them flex their designer muscles. It's not just going and shooting people. It's not just snowmobile racing. We have some really awesome surprises for the players out there in Spec Ops mode that I think are just completely unique to the Call of Duty game. Yeah, as far as DLC goes, it does seem logical that Spec Ops is just perfect for that type of stuff. Modern Warfare 2 will be out November 10th for the PS3, the Xbox 360, and the PC.